This is a five minute primer to refresh you on the key aspects of the surgical technique for the barricade annular closure device. There are four ways that barricade surgery may differ from your regular discectomy. First, this is a floral guided procedure, and so the surgical team should be wearing lead. Make sure the floral monitor is in front of you and ensure the view is in plane with both the targeted vertebral end plate and the posterior wall of the vertebral body. Second, your skin incision may be a couple of centimeters more cranial than usual in order to be parallel and in plane with the disc space, as well as to give access to either end plate. Third, you will likely need to create a bigger bony fenestration in the lamina to make room for the delivery instrument. Implantation generally requires removal of more lamina cranially and out lateral toward the medial border of the facet, or possibly medially by undercutting the spinous process. Studies have shown, including our own RCT, that additional lamina removal has no short or long-term effect on stability. Finally, you should identify the existing hole in the annulus if possible, which may require selective incision of the posterior ligament or outer layers of the bulging annulus. If you typically use tubular retraction, start with a 20 or 22 millimeter tube before eventually moving down to 18 millimeters once you are comfortable with the technique. Measure the size of the annular defect following your decompression using light insertion force. Do not rotate the defect measurement tool within the defect. When you are finished measuring the defect height, take the tool out of the defect before switching to measuring width. Barricade comes in two sizes. Make sure that the barricade is at least as wide as the defect and choose a larger one if access allows in order to maximize protection against reherniation. If the defect width is 11 millimeters or greater, the defect is too large to be closed by the barricade device. During implantation, the anchor will find its own way into the bone, but the occlusion component needs to have a clear path into the disc through the annulus. To make sure this happens, observe two points. First, ensure by fluoro that the defect measurement tool that matches the width of the annular defect is passed through the annulus into the middle of the disc space. Second, keep track of the medial lateral angle of the defect measurement tool. If you don't replicate this angle when using the delivery tool, the occlusion component may not be centered on the annular defect and may not be able to enter the disc. Try the alignment trial on both end plates to see which may provide easier tool alignment and neural retraction. The implant may be implanted in either the superior or inferior vertebral body. When checking the position of the alignment trial by fluoro, Look for three things. First, confirm contact against the target end plate with the tip of the tool in the defect. Second, that an imaginary line extending from the bottom of the tool does not cross the end plate. It is okay to be angled parallel to the end plate or down into the vertebra, but not towards the end plate. Third, confirm contact against the posterior of the vertebral body. If you are using a tubular retractor, you may need to loosen the clamp and wand the tube in order to gain the appropriate orientation. Once you have identified the alignment trial position as acceptable, save this floral image and swap it to the second monitor so you can refer to it during implantation. If you can place the alignment trial appropriately, you will be able to place the delivery tool appropriately. While retracting the neural elements, retract at the bottom of the delivery tool where the anchor base plate will exit, not at the disc space, since the anchor base plate is the sharpest component. While positioning the delivery tool, in order to avoid accidentally releasing the implant prematurely, remember to hold the tool only by the blue handle. Stay clear from touching the white strike cap. If you need to remove the delivery tool prior to implantation, for instance to remove more lamina, hold only by the white strike cap in with the blue, out with the white. When checking the position of the delivery tool by fluoro, remember all three of the alignment trial points mentioned previously. Plus, note the axial rotation of the tool. You should only see one end plate guide in lateral fluoro. Before you start deployment, take a final fluoro of the delivery tool position once the mallet is already in your hand. Make sure to hold the blue handle of the delivery tool firmly to ensure that the tool stays in place during deployment. Start deployment with periodic fluoro checks to make sure the occlusion component is advancing into the nucleus and the delivery tool is seated against the back of the vertebral body. 
Once we see this, keep tapping with the mallet until the ridge of the strike cap aligns with the top of the blue sheath. Take lighter taps as you get closer. Remember, this is a visual stop, not a mechanical stop. Take a floral to confirm that the anchor is appropriately countersunk into the vertebra. Use the retraction wedge to separate the pusher from the implant within the delivery tool. Angle the wedge like a bottle opener to get further separation and make the instrument removal easier. Then press the button and remove the strike cap. Then remove the blue delivery sheath. And finally, the pusher by tipping it toward the disc space and lifting it up while being careful to visualize the neural elements. Finally, confirm the implant position on fluoro and ensure visually and by feel that the anchor is countersunk into the bone.